When shopping for food, do you ever consider how the nutrients you put into your system affect how your body reacts to viruses? Through this video, we will discuss the impact of income and nutrition on COVID. COVID-19 is a severe acute respiratory infection caused by a virus from the coronavirus family. For the COVID-19 strain, some of the symptoms include fever, cough, tiredness, and most noticeably, loss of taste and or smell. On average, the duration of COVID-19 in an individual's body can last anywhere between a few days to several weeks. This is highly dependent on the severity of the infection, which is usually affected by a person's age, their health complications, the strength of their immune system, and etc. The virus that causes COVID-19 enters the body via our nasal and oral airways. This is what makes COVID highly contagious. It is able to travel through the air and or linger in air droplets until someone inhales the virus. At this point, the outermost protein layer of the coronavirus latches onto specific receptors of the surface cells that lie within our respiratory tract. This includes cells in our nose, sinuses, lungs, and trachea. The virus is then able to merge with the membranes of our cells and spill its genetic contents into the host cell to make it duplicate its DNA. This will help the virus multiply and spread through our respiratory tract quicker, causing those symptoms mentioned earlier. As of now, the main route to combat the spread of this disease is vaccines. While they are not a cure to COVID, they significantly reduce the severity of the infection when it takes over the body. Other forms of prevention include quarantining, masks, and social distancing. Now that we understand how COVID works and what it is, let's dive into two factors that affect COVID-19 prognosis, nutrition and socioeconomic factors. So first of all, what is a diet? A diet is the food a person, animal, or community habitually eats. A healthy diet is where nutrients are consumed appropriately to support energy and physiological needs without excess intake. It should include health-promoting foods such as plant-based foods, antioxidants, omega-3 fatty acids, and it should also be low in trans or saturated fats and animal-derived proteins. Healthy dietary patterns naturally occur in certain regions of the world and are rooted in local or regional traditional food sources as is the case for traditional Mediterranean and Asian diets. Moving on, malnutrition has many definitions but is used to describe a deficiency, excess, or imbalance of a wide range of nutrients affecting body composition, function, and clinical outcomes. Malnutrition can be caused by reduced dietary intake, reduced absorption of nutrients, increased losses or altered requirements, and increased energy expenditure. Malnutrition is a common issue that is under-recognized but affects the body and recovery of every organ system. Now moving on to socioeconomic factors. Socioeconomic status is the economic position of an individual or group of people in the society. This status is affected through the combination of social and economic factors that intersect with each other to determine the position of the individual. Some of these factors are education, occupation, income, area of residence, and even ethnic or religious background in the selective society. Today we will be focusing on specifically the factor of income on social economic status and its relation to overall health. How can income impact an individual's level of health? Income determines everything from the neighborhood you live in to the food you eat and to the overall level of health care you'll receive. For example, lower income families may have to live in a densely populated urban neighborhood with poor quality housing and air. The overroutiness can fasten the spread of infectious disease and poor air quality from the industrialized areas can lead to numerous respiratory diseases. Lower income families may also not be able to afford transportation. For this reason, they may opt to eating unhealthy food at fast food restaurants close by rather than spending money on a bus or taxi to go to healthy grocery stores and get nutritious food. Nutritious whole food has also been reported of being more expensive than its fast food counterpart. Another reason low income families may opt for this unhealthy choice. Poor nutrition can result in multiple risks such as high cholesterol, blood pressure, obesity, and further susceptibility to COVID. So back to our main question, how do income, nutrition, and COVID-19 relate? Does a healthy diet that might cost more than an unhealthy diet matter when dealing with a virus? First, studies have already shown that nutrition is essential to maintaining a sound immune system to prevent various diseases. A healthy diet with proper nutrient intake can improve a person's immune system through various biological methods such as gene expression, cell activation, and signaling, or in other words, various mechanisms that are constantly happening which affect how the body deals with everything. Specific nutrients such as zinc, iron, and vitamins A, B12, B6, C, and E 
are the most well known to influence the immune system. These nutrients are commonly found in non-processed or organic foods, which are more expensive and less accessible in low-income areas. Statistics have shown that people with a lower income in Canada were more likely to die due to COVID. The results can be explained by the inaccessibility of adequate nutrients, resulting in a weaker constitution. As previously mentioned, people with lower income may choose a cheaper option and less nutritious alternative, while those with higher income have more choices and are not as limited. Disclaimer, although evidence supports the positive impact of a healthy diet on COVID-19, other factors may influence the studies conducted and their observed results. Nutrition is only one of the many contributing factors to the mortality rate. Other studies have shown similar results. Specifically, one study showed that areas with a Mediterranean diet that is high in plant-based and anti-inflammatory food, while also low in processed red meats, have shown a lower death rate compared to other European countries. Back to our main question, does socioeconomic factors and nutrition impact the risk of COVID-19? With the available information, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments and thank you for listening.